Hey guys, it's Mad Morta, and it's time for part three of the Wii Portable work log. Um, you can see that I have my screen hooked up and my battery uh, hooked up to my um, to my Wii Portable, and it is working. I'm doing kind of some testing um, just to make sure it's all good still. Um, and it is because I, I put the regulators on and, and did a couple minor things that could have caused it to stop working, but they didn't. So. Um, and I figure since I have it hooked up, I might as well show you guys that it's working. So, here's the remote that's synced to it. And... Here... I'm a little close to the sensor bar, so it's kind of jumping around, but... Um, it's like right there, and it's a regular size sensor bar, so it's kind of hard to, to do at a weird angle. But you can tell that I can, I can control it and um, click on stuff, so... Yeah, um, I have the reset button hooked up and the sync button hooked up. I actually took the sync button off, but I put it back on for the video. Um, and the battery, uh, this is not the battery I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the purple. Actually, I'm going to be using this with two cells. And I think I'm going to use the purple ones, but that's not necessarily set in stone because I've been thinking if I have this whole like plug and play kind of thing for it, I should really find a way to easily replace the batteries, and there's no reason not to, so if I can figure that out, that would be amazing. Um, so I'm kind of mulling that over. Um, it'd be nice to have like a like a bracket, you know, you could just put them in and pop them out and put new ones in. Um, the only reason I'd use the purple ones is because they have these little tags on them that let you solder to them without soldering to the battery. Um, but I could use better cells if I could fit them in a bracket, but because they fit kind of awkwardly, they fit kind of like, like, at an angle, it'd be kind of weird to put the, to put the things in there, so I'm not sure yet. Um, it's a, the batteries are a work in progress, and I'll keep you up to date on that. Um, I do have these figured out, um, and I found that you have to glue, uh, the tacked switches together still, even though they're in the bracket and can't move a whole lot. Um, if you glue them together still, it it helps tremendously with your button not wiggling. Um, it feels a little nice and tight, and before it was kind of wiggling around. Um, it took me a while to figure it out. Um, you can tell that I got my regulators hooked up really small. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Um, I got my regulators hooked up like as small as I can, and they're all kind of crammed in this one corner. And um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, it's kind of actually super awkward that they're all... I mean, if you can imagine this being in here like this, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on over here really tight, and then, like, all of this over here is just empty. So it's, it's kind of awkwardly fit together, but um, I'm sure I'll find something to put over there. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, so um, the reason I have my regulators over here is there's two reasons. One of them is that all the connections that they need to connect to, like there and there and there, are all on this half of the board. So if I had them over here, I would either have to wire down around here, which, you know, inconveniences my batteries, or up around here, which is just kind of inconveniencing everything. Um, so I kind of had to put them over here, and since my Wii has to fit on this side of the case, it's just, it's awful. So. Um, they're really crammed in over here, but they do fit, and they fit with this on top of it as well, so everything's good. Although you'll notice I did have to have this awkward capacitor over here, um, so it wouldn't stick up or anything. And then on top of that, <laughs> this one's, these were all nice and orderly looking, and then I, I put this in. Uh, this is a screw hole from a PlayStation 2. Um, it's one of the feet where you can put, like, the rubber foot in it. And it has, like, a place that hides a screw. Um, so I actually pulled the the screw post out of the PS2. Um, and that's what's going to hold the, the faceplate on. These are going to be glued to the bottom of the faceplate. And you'll be able to unscrew that from underneath. Um, I'm actually going to be using slightly smaller screws than the ones that go in the PS2. Uh, because I found some ones that I think are from a Wii. Um, they're just, a, just like a shade smaller, and they they still fit very well, but they're easier to turn um, 
than the PS2 ones, and I'm a little bit worried that, you know, if I don't epoxy it in well enough, that just, like, the torque from turning the screw will, like, rip the, the screw post off the bottom of this, and then I won't be able to get my portable open, so that's, like, a major thing. So I'm using the smaller screws. Um, I'd rather have them fall out than have them, um, you know, hang in too tight. So, um, let's see. What else? Um, hmm. I'm thinking. Um, so, the regulators are all over here, and you'll notice that this one's all crooked. That's because the screw post has to go here. Um, there wasn't really anywhere else to put these two. That's why they look kind of awkwardly... I mean, they're more towards the middle on the top, which is kind of weird looking, but kind of cool, but also still weird. So, um, I'm not too upset about it, though, because, like, I mean, it'd be, it'd be annoying if this was, like, right here, I think. So, I mean, that's just me, but I think that would bother me more than if it was over here. Because um, they will stick up a bit. And the reason that I used the, the feet was, uh, first of all, because this has to be printed face down, um, so I couldn't put recessed screw holes in there without supports and that just makes it ugly and it's going to be visible so um, that wasn't happening. And then uh, the other reason was because this actually like wobbled on a, on a flat surface it would like it would kind of like tilt back and forth a bit just naturally. Um, so I fixed that when I put these in which is why one of them's a little higher. <laughs> this one's higher than the, than the left one uh, you can kind of see. And same with these ones. Um, one's higher than the other. Um, so it's kind of awkward looking, but I think once it's all painted and stuff, it won't be as bad looking. Um, I think just because they're like different colors, you'll, you see them stand out more. Um, let's see. Uh, so this is not my battery, um, but I might take this apart and use the cells. I'm not sure. Um, there's a couple reasons I don't want to use the purple ones, but I think these ones are Panasonic's, but I'm not sure. So I have to, I have to find out. Um... Let's see. And I should be able to just swap them out for here. I don't think that would be an issue. Um, but I'll, I'll check before doing that. Um, let's see. So the MX ship's working. I like how the battery's plugged in. Although I do need to like epoxy the battery a little nicer onto it. Um, so it's not, you know, all in the way. Um, yeah, so here is my faceplate. Um, you'll notice that I have the Samus logo instead of the words We S Light on it. Um, it's because I'm going to be painting it, and I figured that if I'm going to be painting it, I should at least put, like, the logo from what I'm painting it on there, and, um, We S Light kind of looks awkward on there anyway, so, um, I gave up on that and am doing this. So it's going to be Metroid-themed, um, so orange and, and red, and I found the perfect colors from Tamaya, so I'm going to be, um, using those. I think they're, like... Think of like metallic, metallic orange or I don't know. They're like sparkly but totally Samus colors. Um, so I'm gonna order those when I have you know money, and then I have to order uh, screws for these. Um, I'm waiting on my heat sink to put the fan vent in there, and I'm waiting for the um, driver board to do audio and video. Um, and I'm kind of waiting to do audio and video before I do this. Um, I guess I could do that, but I really just don't want to. I'm kind of putting it off because, you know, here's here's kind of my thinking: is I'm gonna be mounting the uh, the GC Plus board on here. So if I need to make another revision of this uh, because the top screen is too shallow and I need more room, if I need to make another one of these, um, it's gonna be like awkward trying to get all of these off and then unmounting the GC Plus and then transferring that over to a new one. It just seems like that should be like the last thing I do, so um, it's kind of awkward not having a GameCube controller to navigate anything, but um, I do have, <laughs> thankfully I do have the Bluetooth hooked up, so that's something. Um, anyway, so I believe that's it for this update. Um, it's really small, but I since I had it hooked up, I thought I might as well just show you that I did the regulators and chopped up my battery and kind of what I was what I was thinking um, but it's probably gonna be a while before the next update because it should be um, a couple weeks before um, at least a week before my my driver board gets in because it's still in China so um, 
but that's my Instagram posts and, and all that stuff. So um, that's it for this update, and thanks for watching.